Hi everyone, this is Meir. Today, it's a beautiful sunny day in San Francisco. They say that it's going to be a bit cooler, but whether it will or not, I truly enjoy the day. Let me tell you something. Something unusual happened to me. I got sick. Unusual because maybe once every two or three years I get sick. And it was hard for me to accept it at first. I kept working until one of my clients said to me, it's time for you to go home. So I did that. It's interesting. Many times people take pills in order to sweat, get rid of the fever, and then to feel better. And many times that works. But I decided to do something completely different. I decided to let the fever just be there. Because I think the fever has a reason to be there. And so I allowed myself to be sick on Friday night through Saturday. But on Saturday, I met a person I really loved. My daughter, without letting me know, came and visited my house, which was an amazing surprise. She also stayed in the room that she always slept. And so she invited me for a nice cup of tea and walked with me part way to the park. So I had a wonderful company. And then I worked on my own. And I felt that the trees and the oxygen have really helped me. I got a nice massage. And throughout Saturday, I started to completely recover. On Sunday, there was vestiges of the illness. But what happened on Saturday night is exactly what most people would want to see happening on Friday night, which was the first night of the illness. They would take pills so they would sweat the night that they have fever. I let the fever be. Of course, it's different if the fever is very high. But the second day, my body automatically sweat and got rid of the fever. So to allow the illness eat good, I made myself a nice vegetable soup with lentils. It was so delicious and so healing. And relax. And the illness went away. And I thought it would never happen. But today, I had all the energy I normally had I lied on the beach and rolled from side to side on the sand, stretched and then ran. And the feeling was amazing. So let's return to this national crisis of ours. One out of every three people has chronic pain. Can you imagine that? And we're calling for all kinds of scientific ways to reduce the opioid crisis. My goodness, what kinds of solutions? None of them works unless we work with nature. First of all, don't take the pills that the doctor gives you. Don't reduce your pain so you won't feel what you do to destroy your body. Do what I did. Follow the disease. Do what the disease tells you to do. So, if you have pain because you lift heavy objects, learn how to lift them right so you don't get that pain. If you have pain because your posture is hard on you, work to start and use muscles you never used before so you will have no pain. And if you can allow yourself to go step by step to change the function of your body, you will be pain-free. 
And that's why I'm inviting all of you to my August class, especially for the first part of it. I will teach you how to move, how to breathe, how to feel, how to change the direction that your nervous system takes. Which reminds me how once I ran for 20 miles and my feet would not move in any different way than they did for a long time. I would lift them six inches from the ground, not four and not eight, not two and not ten, until I understood that I'm not controlling my controllable function. Sounds funny, isn't it? Because skeletal muscles should be under our control, but our patterns are as rigid as walls or bones. So I crawled, bathed in the cold ocean, and then ran in a way that made sense to me. So you need to learn to break patterns that don't work for you. You need to learn how to use every difficult condition in life to your benefit. And this is what the August class will teach you. So we'll finish with an exercise that I want you to do daily. Put a tennis ball under your foot and move your foot forwards and backwards from the big toe to heel and heel to the big toe from the middle toes to the heel and heel to the middle toe, from the little toe to heel and heel to the little toe, from side to side underneath your toe, side to side in the middle of your foot, and in rotating motion under your heel, and then move the ball in rotating motion under your foot. Do the same thing with the other foot. Toe to heel and heel to toe. Big toe to heel and heel to toe. Feel all those places in your arch where you don't want to feel that pain. Put pressure against that ball and feel that pain and enjoy it because it will loosen you up. It will change your posture to the best. Then put the ball under your toes and roll the ball down to your heel and back up to the toes. Get the ball from little toe to heel and heel to little toe. Then move the ball from side to side underneath your toes. Move the ball from side to side in the middle of the foot and move the ball in rotating motion under the heel. Breathe deeply and slowly. So now, we can do this exercise while sitting at the computer, while sitting at the desk. We can do this exercise when we stand up. We can do it daily. So we we'll loosen up the feet because they're always confined in shoes. They're always under pressure. And one of the reasons that reflexology works so well is that the posture of the body is always affected by the tension of your feet. I will talk to you again and very soon. Have a wonderful week and more than that, a wonderful spring.